Hey, I'm Kerwin Frost, and on this episode of Kerwin Frost Talks, we're in Utah uh, with the biggest rock star in the world, the most interesting man in the world, Post Malone! Yeah! Ah. Thanks for coming on my show. Hey, thanks for having me. Thanks it's, for coming to my house. Yeah, 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 man. Uh, oh, man, how have you been? Really good. <laughs> really, really nice and just working hard, but um, making it work. Yeah. Finished an album and it feels good. You used to, um, you used to live in LA, mm -hmm. but you moved here to Utah. Mm -hmm. And I also know the album's called Hollywood, Hollywood's Bleeding. Mm -hmm. How do you feel about LA? And like, did you just feel like not at home there? No, not at all. LA's, LA's interesting because like, there are, there are whoa, 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 what are you doing? We're smoking wood tips today, buddy. Oh yeah, here yeah. you go. That's such a Utah thing. That's a Utah thing. Everyone knows when you come to Utah, you have a wood tip. <clears throat> here, let me get yours. Mm -hmm. My big special guy. How's that? Yeah, it's hitting perfect. Hmm. It's been since I was like fourteen and a half. Nah, I haven't smoked one. In Plus a seven. I have not smoked one. I think since I was fifteen. But uh, we, had, we had to do it for Utah, you know? Yeah, I can't believe it. I don't know, who did you ask if it was a Utah thing? That's what they told me that when I landed. Ooh. It, it was uh, this guy had like an orange vest. He said, I was like, what's like the Utah tradition? He was like, oh, we like put meat sauce on fries. I was like, what? Okay, that's like, sounds like poutine. Fry sauce. Yeah, I was like, I'm not gonna do that. That's like a little too messy. I was like, give me something else. And then he said, oh, well, there's a wood tip. I was like, what are you talking about? Like wood tips, we we only you know the real kings smoke the wood tips in Utah. You know it'd be awesome to put fucking fry sauce on our wood tip. That's disgusting. It sounds gross coming out of my mouth. Continue what you were saying about oh. LA. <laughs> it's interesting because there's cool, there is good people in LA. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But often you find yourself sitting alone at night contemplating like, are these my real friends or not? Yeah, you know I I. Uh... When I was, uh, I stayed in LA for a little bit and I had the same, I get the same energy for, and everyone sure. calls me crazy for it. But there's this like dark energy in the air. There is. It, it just feels is. lonely, no matter what you have. It feels weird. Sometimes I would walk outside and feel like, oh, the world is about to end. Like right in the morning and all the, the grass is dewy and right, the, right. the hoppers are, what, what do they know? What do they do? The grasshoppers? Yeah. They hop around. But what, what, what song do they sing? What's that called? I don't know. The, the grasshoppers are serenading the morning air, and you feel like the world's going to end, but it doesn't. Mm. And what made you pick Utah? I don't know. I did a show here, right near the, the, the Great Salt Lake, and um, I fell in love. And then a couple of weeks later, we bought this house, and then it was, it was old and still had, like, denim on the walls yeah. for some reason. Yeah. But um, we fixed it up, and now it's home. Yeah, I'm not sure. I remember. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm getting a couple of those too. Yeah, the little little tidbits. Um, do you uh, do you want to go back to like maybe the beginning and like how you got just into music? Because when I met you, you had just put White Iverson on SoundCloud, and he came to New York. I remember that. Where did we? How did we fucking meet? I think you DM'd Ass Pizza, and then it was me and him, and then we're we're gonna meet with you. And, and I think that was, yeah, the jersey, the gold teeth, the corn rolls in, and uh, we, found Nerf gun, we found Nerf guns on Crosby Street. Yeah. We just started shooting and them at each other. Around. That was Steve it. And, and awesome. That was yeah. fun. Yeah. That was a good fucking time. That night. was a good time. Where did we go? We went to Kith or something too? We did, yeah. And then we just ended up going to St. Mark's and sitting on the steps. Do you remember that? It was a really great night for me. But it was just like that history of like, you knowing about just the streetwear world, yeah. People don't know that. Right. How, like, yeah. That was for me, like, window shopping online all the time. Yeah? And you, you guys' squad was super impeccable. I remember Mike the Ruler, too. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember yeah. looking, I was like, this kid is too fucking hard yeah. to see what's going Like, I remember that shit. But that was just for me looking at stuff, and now I finally had some, some... David Guetta to you know go out and buy what I want. David Chetta to go. I out remember and buy what, what. Do you remember when uh, when we went to uh, 
when we when we first went to um I think it was Barney's and I went with you and I think you had just got like your first big check, but you were wearing like a you were wearing like a thermal shirt and like small like champion shorts, like like pajama shorts. Sounds like something I would wear. It was and awesome. I probably was wearing at that time I was probably wearing Margella Futures. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every day. Yeah, I just remember that time. Or even like like you opening for Fatty Wap at Irving Plaza. That was a fun fucking <laughs> tour. Jesus. That was really fun. Yeah. You ever think back to those days? Yeah, man. I wish I was back in those days. Do you yeah. really? I mean, you know, I, I mean, love I love everything now, but I mean, back then it was really so much simpler. Right, like, right. I just got back, and then I got two weeks to relax, and then we go on another fucking tour. And um, I'm excited and ready to play new music for people. Right. But, you know, I want to be at home sometimes and just relax and yeah. um, do nothing. Big gamer energy, yeah. Mountain Dew Live Wire. What are your favorite games? <sighs> PUBG. I play this really nerdy game called Elder Scrolls Legends. I heard about it's that. It's like one. magic. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, we just run around and do gamer shit. <laughs> Tell me about the new album. Okay. I heard some of it when you were sleeping. Sure. <laughs> And it, I, like, I'm not just saying this because I'm in your home, but it, I, I feel like it's, it's just like your best body of work. Well, that's really nice of you to say. Yeah. I worked really hard on it. That's really nice of you. Kerwin Kosai? Hmm? Oh yeah, yeah, 100%. Every song I was like, what the fuck? Will you be in a music video? I would love to. You know how like Chris Delia did um, Eminem? No. Will you do me? Will you be my body double? I would love that. Okay. Yeah. We have the same hat, so nobody can tell the difference. The Scissor song was like really sick. She's awesome. The Ozzy Osbourne, I mean, that I mean was, how'd that come about? I don't know. It was just like, uh, I was talking to, to Lewis and, and shit, and I, a while ago we had like a whiteboard of like, like rock stars that we wanted to work with and shit. Yeah. And then Lou hit me up. He was like, hey, Andrew's getting in with Ozzy and he wants to do a song. Mm -hmm. So then we made that song and I was like, fuck. It's pretty fucking awesome, you know? Yeah. Um, he's a badass and still fucking got it. It's crazy to me that he's still touring yeah. and shit. Like, what a legend, man. I got the goosebumps when I heard that. Thanks, buddy. Good goosebumps? Or like, it's way too cold in here, goosebumps? No, no, they were good. They were good. I don't really get them a lot. I got it when I heard the song. Thanks. Dude. And then the other song I got that too Excuse was uh, me. was the the one Kanye produced. Mm. I like that song too. That song has been done for three years. I yeah, think. I was I I think I was in the studio when it was made. Yeah. And it was a, uh, it was me and uh and, and Bobby, and I had no money and Bobby was just smoking like so much weed, and I was like I was so hungry. I was like, damn, like, when is he gonna get the munchies, you know? When is he gonna get the munchies? He never got the munchies, he just kept really? smoking. No, yeah, yeah, he just kept, he just never got hungry. But I got to hear, I got to hear you make Fade, and sure. then I got to hear the rest of the life of Pablo. Sure. And that was pretty awesome. I was hungry, dude. You were hungry that whole time? That you whole fed you? I was fucking dancing and like, just so excited, but I was so hungry. I would have given you something. How do you even ask for that? You know what I mean? I like the album because it has like, I think it's like, has a really cool vibe. It's kind of like got ups and downs on it of celebration and lament. Yeah. And I don't know, I think as a whole, it's really nice to listen to. I'd say my favorite song on the album is the, the album. Just like a one, the entire a one, one pass. run through listen. Yeah. I don't know. Do you feel like, um, cause you can really hear progression. Sure. In between the three, is this three albums? It's three, right? Yeah. You really hear the progression. And I feel like on this album, you're like the most free you've been. And Thanks. just in terms of, uh, of where you are in life, I feel like like now it's like, you know, you're just like the biggest rock star in the world. I think that's you. No, I think it's you. I think well, you're, actually, it's fucking you. No, I, I, think, I, think, <laughs> I, think you're the, I think you're the biggest rock star you should in the probably, world. You should probably leave. Just joking. Please stay. Please stay forever. I mean, did you see this happening? Like, did you, like, 
anticipate this because this is crazy. And then, yeah, even knowing you on the personal side, the, 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 the inspiration for music that you do get is like, like different but not like the elements you take from it right. is like it's really kind of perfect and, and structured because yes, you don't really listen to like a lot of rap i don't listen i don't listen to a lot of shit yeah i don't listen i try not to listen to to music like a whole lot right you know what i mean why, why do you think that is I, that. I think it's because um i think it's because what i'm like I guess I'm stuck and I try to stay off of, you know, the internet as much as I can now. Right, right. And I kind of just, I, I'm still listening to like, uh, you know, old Young Thug and, right, and right. Fleet Fox is the same album over and over again. Yeah. And it, you know, it's just, I don't really, I, and I think that's cool because it's like, you know, you hear like trends and shit. Right, right. And you know, it's very easy to get inspired. It's, it's very easy to get inspired by something. But Plus I like I like to reach out into the ether and kind mm -hmm. of grab it, find it yourself. It's yeah. a hunt. Yeah, it's sit more about around that. Yeah. And slam a couple of sudsy ones and yeah, just get inspired yourself. I don't know, but I did listen to the new Thug too, and it's fucking incredible. Yeah. yeah I love Damn, that. that's cool. What other what what other um. Artists, do you love right now? Billy's dope. Um, I love the baby, and he's cool. on the album too. Yeah, he's, I didn't hear that such one. a cool fucking cat. Um, I don't know, man. I just kind of lounge around all day, and if the mood strikes, I'll put something on and just chill and drink and shit. What would you say? You're like ultimate goal is with just your life? I'd say just to be here all the time and have enough money to do what I want to do because that's what, that's what I think success is, yeah. is being happy and not being limited by, you know, like, like terrestrial shit, like the need to pay taxes and have a job so you can do the stuff you want to do. Yeah. I think success is like, Having what you need and being able to do what you want, you know, whenever you want and just kind of relaxing and being happy and soaking it in, you know? Yeah. And I'm working on it now, you know? What do you feel like the biggest misconception of Post Malone is mm -hmm. that people always get wrong? I don't know. There's, there was a thing on Wikipedia a long time ago that says I was like a really good volleyball player and um, I played like... Triple A volleyball. Yeah, <laughs> that's a big misconception. That's not true. Um, I don't know, man. I really am just floating around, figuring it out. I don't know. What's your biggest misconception of Post Malone? I think a lot of people have a hard time, like, I guess, understanding like the mind of Post Malone. Sure. I don't know. It's like they they can't really put you in a box. Like that's always been the biggest sure. problem. It's sure. like in the beginning they wanted to put you in the rap box. And then they wanted to put you in in, in in this genre box and all this, but it's like, I feel like your ties with music and just your like knowledge of history is more like, kind of all over the place. It's sure. not like in one specific place. No, you're you're someone who even gets like inspired by landscapes, you know? Right. And so it's like looking at a good landscape. I don't know. It's like like the Justin Timberlake album. Yeah. Shit. But it's like. What did you say? What did you say with SZA? You said you want to look at a landscape. Oh, and listen to, to John Mayer? John Mayer, that's what Fuck it was. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck yeah, dude. That's what you got to do. You're damn right. You ever listen to 3 by 5 by John Mayer? Mm -mm. It's about, uh, it's, it's, it's about uh, him sending postcards to his girlfriend. But uh, he's saying, like, the next time I have to take you here, no more 3 by 5s So he's that's like, you got to see this That's a cool me. name for a song. Yeah, it's, it's a good song, dude. He's... That guy's a genius. It's, yeah, fucking yeah. He you is. made anything with him yet? No. We were, the funny thing is, is we were gonna do Stay a long time ago. Like he was gonna do a solo on Stay, I think, and do a verse, but it just never worked out. But he's just a fucking. Honestly, like being around him, it's so weird because you never. He's like a movie character. Right, right. Because everything you say, he has something so smart to say to back. To say back to it. Yeah, it's Click interesting. On his feet. Yeah, it's it's really interesting, and he's just I don't know what a gangster, what a legend. Ask me something, go ahead. Um, 
How do you feel now doing your um, your show? Were you I, nervous at the beginning, and now you feel more comfortable, or is it always the same? I always hated being on camera. Yeah. I wonder why you're so handsome. I'm just shy. I'm a shy sure. person. Sorry, Bubby. I just, I just, I just always get shy. But it's, it was, it's been interesting, like just kind of watching the feedback from it mm. and allowing people to see like a, a real unbiased conversation. Yeah. About like an artist's career. Sure. And I just I have fun doing it. It's yeah. cool, and it's like I've always kind of been a fan of pop culture, but like this has like been a really good add-on that like so many times I was gonna stop doing, and then like found a reason to keep going. And you like, are pop culture. All right, calm down. Kerwin's been behind the scenes of every major major play ever. That's pretty true. It's actually true. No, that's true. That's true. And she. That's pretty fucking true. That's she. <laughs> tell, tell me about you and Justin Bieber. Okay. Because I feel that's like a great interview question that I've never gotten. Before. No one tells you about that, right? <laughs> no one ever asks you that. Um, I don't, he's a he's a really 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 you and really Jay good yeah. But listen, guy. you and JB together are like Daft Punk. It's just gold. Any any song you guys make, and I always tell you that. That's awesome. And I, I've, I've heard some of the other tracks. Yeah, the, the shit where there's no words or anything. No, there's words. <laughs> When's it coming out, man? I love the shit. You're holding I, out. I love the shit, too, because people will put my songs, like, so, some, someone will get into, like, someone's email and leak a song, and it'll just be a scratch vocal with no words, and then people try to put words to it, and I'm like, I'm literally saying nothing. Yeah, that's true. But JB's such a fucking gangster. He's such a legend, man, and... Such a sweet guy, and um, it's been a while since we got to hang out. It's just been super busy time, but um, I don't like this. I'm gonna put this one out for later. So what's up, man? Huh? So what's up? With? So what tip? Oh, I thought you said so what's up. Oh no, no, I was just saying it's what's up. It doesn't have enough fry sauce on it. Shit. It needs more ketchup. You know what I mean? You ever just light a cigarette and say, this needs more ketchup. I don't smoke cigarettes anymore, past. I see you fucking shredding that jewel like nobody's biz. Dude, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Is that a secret, of your secret? Yeah. I'm gonna just stick to one of these good old boys. Never does me wrong. <laughs> you missed out. You do look like a boss, though. It's for bosses, the wet tips are for bosses. Everyone knows this. Seriously. How many came in that pack? Just two? I only two I bought two Lucy's. Nice. One for me, I one for it. you. <laughs> really good. That was it. I said this is this. I remember one. these things. It's the yeah. worst part. It's just like we thought we were so cool. <laughs> but you actually are cool. You know what I do have though? It's kind of like a wood tip, but it's like it's one like of a the, cigarette holder? It's one of the Cruella Deville things. I don't know. It's a cigarette holder. Yeah. When's it time for my pencil? You give me permission? Dude, you can never you couldn't handle the pencil. Will you give me the tattoo? Your I don't shirt? know if it'll be that big, but I'll do it. Where would you get it? On my face, you idiot. You wouldn't get it on your face. Yes, I would. Have you seen my face? It's already ruined. You look, you look beautiful. Thank you. You remember when you broke my AC? Yeah, I remember it, man. Okay. <laughs> this is the time to get it off your chest and we can smush this beef right now. Okay, all right. So, so you know, Post Malone was on the, uh, the, the Justin Bieber tour. It was crazy. That was an insane it, moment. It was, it very much so was. I, I think I cried when I saw you on that stage at Barclays, I'm not gonna lie. Really? Yeah, that was, oh, dude, that was like a couple months before that I saw you at Urban Closet. And, and, and then after the show, we just, we just came and, and me and Steve, we rapped for you backstage, remember that? Hell yeah. And then so. T-Star. T-Star. A couple months later, I came to LA, and I had nowhere to stay. I was like, "What the hell?" So, I, so I hit up Post. He was like, "Yeah, dude, I, I, I got, a, I got a new house. You could come, you come and stay, being the nice guy he is." So then, you know, I, I come stay at this house. There's, there's nothing there. There's, there's no just, furniture. Just, there just anyway. portraits, <laughs> portraits of him just painted on the wall. Uh, maybe two couches, a couple vinyls, uh, a pool. Um, 
<laughs> that's the best house ever. That's it. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> that's the best house ever. And the funny thing is, somebody moved in, not to cut, cut you off mm -hmm. with your vivid portrayal. I remember it perfectly. But the uh, like, a month after I moved, mm -hmm. some dudes broke into that house and there was like a couple living there and like hit them and shit. Oh, and they're wow. like, where's Post Malone and shit? Wow, you got out of there at the right time. I guess so. Wait, didn't Logan Paul post your address on the video? Yeah. But I think. That was a different house though. That wasn't the same one? Mm -hmm. Anyways, I was staying <laughs> at this house with his assistant and, and I, was, I was, I think it was like a month or two and it was just like just deep i think it was like was it like it's close to calabasas or something it was in Sino. it was in Sino. and everything would just break in the house like i would <laughs> lean on the wall and the wall would just break i i got in the pool so the lights just stopped working i uh i go to use the bathroom the toilet's broken so one night i'm like just this is like a it's not a real this is like a eric andre like like set like literally everything is just breaking so easy i'm freaking the fuck out because uh you're I'm waiting for you to break something yeah, here nothing's gonna break here because this is a nice house <laughs> all right this was a paper wrap house you just got the first check you bought this house uh you got it for a year and everything's paper mache and dude. it's I, true too because you'd go into the bathroom and like the fixtures were from like 1918. yeah dude it was weird in the other bathroom it was full of shit and the toilet wouldn't flush. I had to use this other bathroom and it who, got broken. Who made the shit? I didn't make the shit. You dude. didn't I, make that? Dude, I promise you, I did not make the shit. Anyways, <laughs> so so I'm 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 running on a, a fucking I'm running on thin ice right here. So you know, Puss is still on tour. I'm at his house with his assistant at the time, Alec, who's like, he's just over me. I just fucking I I just dodge him as much as possible. <laughs> So, you know, one particular night in the fucking summer, it's like night, it's like 95 degrees. It's so hot. Like, I, I can't breathe. I'm in this, like, it's like the guest room. And, and I can't, another thing with this thing, it had like clear windows and it, no shades. So like, if you woke up, the sun would just sign off. <laughs> you would just wake up to the sun fucking beaming. And it was hot all so, the fucking time. So at night, it's so fucking hot and, <laughs> I go to the thermostat and, and I turn it down a little bit, just a little bit, and then I go back in the room and I'm like, wow, nothing's happening. So I keep turning it down. I'm at 50 at this point. I'm the point of no return. So I leave it on 50, I go into the room. It's a placebo effect, because nothing's happening in the fucking room. It's so hot. I'm sweating, I'm sleeping. I wake up, his assistant Alec is just like, just burst in the door. He's like, oh no, I just hear him yelling in the other room like it's a fucking TV show. He's just like, what the fuck? And I'm like, oh, fuck, 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 fuck. And he like calls me to Kerwin. It's like a fucking sitcom, dude. I walk into the room, the fucking, I don't know. the ceiling is just fucking, it's just bleeding of fucking water. He's like, dude, you, you gotta get out of here. You gotta go, you gotta go. And, and that was it, I was out. And I remember I texted him, or he texted me. He was like, hey, I could Kerwin out. And I'm like, wait, what? I wanted you guys there when I came back. Well, he's fired now, right? So. It was, it was, a, it was. He's a, out of the picture now because of it. We're still friends. Yeah. He was doing his own shit. Right, right, right. He's working on his own shit. He's betting on the horses. Just betting on the horses and <laughs> made it work. We squashed the beef. Come on, man. That's okay. I fucking love you. Family, dude. Oh my Come on now. Oh my God, my big special guy. Now tell me, tell me the truth about your childhood because no one knows anything about you. Like what? Just, what happened, man? How'd you grow up? Tell me the truth. Great question. Tell me the truth! You, if you Google it, you can't find anything. Well... No one knows your real story, and that's kind of what I want to get out. Let's do it. Because was, you're kind of like this just mystery man. I was born in Syracuse, New York. Mm-hmm. To a father, Richard Post. Mm -hmm. And a mother, Nicole. Yeah. And, um... You know, we were, I was, I moved out when I was nine to Dallas. I didn't really do much in New York, but eat dinosaur barbecue chips. Uh, I like dinosaur barbecue. They don't make them anymore, the chips. Oh, okay. At yeah. least not in Syracuse. It mm -hmm. really pissed me off because I would eat them all the time. That's all I would do. Yeah. And um, then I moved to Dallas. My dad started working with the Cowboys as like um, a food guy selling food and shit. Man, that's cool. My mom worked for the Yankees. 
Really? Yeah. And then now it's the same food. company. Wow. It's called Legends. That's crazy. So they do Cowboys, Yankees, a couple other things. So you move at nine. Basically, yeah. when you move at nine, you're like not fully developed. No. And so you're kind of like basically raised in Texas. That's what I say. I say I got drunk for the first time in Texas. Mm, okay. That makes sense. So that's, that's what I say. So you're nine years old. Your dad's sure. working for the Cowboys. Sure. And then, um, I don't know. I sit, a lot of people um, around me had friends. Yeah. I, didn't really, I had a really select group of friends. Yeah. And I was a sad kid. Right. <clears throat> and What, did you just like feel misunderstood <clears throat> and stuff? Like, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know. I used to get like fucked with because I wore skinny jeans and shit. And, yeah, right. And um, I don't know. I, started, I sat down and I started playing music. Yeah. Like playing guitar and shit. And then I started, like, I was like, oh, how do... How do people make beats? Right. Right? Like what you you know, getting into like it like I don't know if this is for every producer, but with me I was sitting around, I was like, you know what, I wanna I wanna make beats. How the fuck does that happen? Right. You know what right. I mean? How how do you do that? So I looked up the different programs, there's like logic shit, and then FL Studio, I saw that it was free. Right. And maybe the rest of them are free too, but I don't know. I saw that it was free. That one was more bold to you. And then I was just like, Yeah, I love it. And right. so I started fucking around on that. And what I started, were you listening to around the time? Shit. If you can remember. Because whenever I first started making beats, I was probably 13. Okay. 14. And I was listening to um, Rocky, Fleet Foxes, um, Metal, Old Country, fucking Thug. Um, Were you just like researching all types of music? No, I, I like uh, like a lot of people say. I was that, like that when I was. A younger. lot of people say that like, oh, I listen to everything, but like right. you, the, you put on a country song and they'll be like, oh, it's country. Yeah, I don't like best. it. Yeah, but like. It's, I, I genuinely fucking like everything. Yeah. Like, so you were just obsessed with music early on. Right. And, like and that's, that's, that's of part of, that's my parents too, my mom, because my mom listened to country, my dad listened to rap and metal. Okay. And so kind of like, just like it's everything put all together. Yeah. I mean, um, and then, you know, I graduated high school and then I was like, Jason, my friend Jason, who I lived with was like, hey, I'm moving to LA. Yeah. And so like I dropped I went to TCC for 3 months. Yeah. And dropped out and moved out there with him and then That's it. You ready to talk about the song? What song? You know the one. How did it come about? Oh, uh, that's I've song. met eight different producers that have taken credit for it. What song? You know the one. White Iverson? Is that the one? I made that song. I sat around and made the beat, and then I brought it to, I was with Rex okay. in LA, and then we started. What did Rex do on the beat? Couldn't tell you. The plaque is hung up in his studio. But, you know, it was a different time, and I, and I messed, I'm recently, Rex for, uh, was in London, Yeah. I was just over there, and it was good to see him. We had a little bit of a falling out. I could, I, I could around that time, and but it was good to see him, and um, I think we both grew up. That's cool. I definitely did, and it was good to see him, and I love you, and it sucks how shit turned out, but I do love you and yeah. want the best for you. But you know, um, it was good to see him, and then we made the song, and then I checked. Mac tweeted me, and Wiz tweeted me, and right, I was like, right. these are fucking people that I listen to, right? And, like, it was awesome. So then, what was it for you? Because you were almost like kind of put to the test of like the 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 one song curse, which right. they, they almost tried to put Ray Shremmer in when they made No Type, and they had they went against the same thing. What those they are so fucking talented. Yeah, no, one hundred percent. And it's so like, are you? Well, thank you. But I mean, it's like. You do feel that pressure. Yeah. Um, you do feel that pressure. But once you get your foot in the, in the door, you, you kind of just let, I guess, the energy of what's going on around you inspire you to say, 
I'm not looking to make a hit or another hit or anything. I'm just no. trying to make the best music that I can and the mood that I'm in now. And it's important not to like feel pressured. Yeah. Bec you just want to feel the love and feel the energy of it. Lighten her up. Oh, here. Oh, shit. There you go. It's pretty cool, huh? It's a little scary. I know. I was gonna shave, but I just decided I was gonna burn it off my my stash. Matching. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Matching. You got pipes too. Why have you never made a know. mixtape or something? People ask me to. I just. I want. I'm looking for the T Star tape. That's all I'm looking for. It's coming. Believe me. Tell me about your songwriting. <laughs> Tell me about it, now! I would say you're one of the best songwriters really? of today's time. That's extra, no. You don't deal well with compliments. And no, that's, I always feel not, awkward telling you about your true. music. I, that's really nice. Because I like it, I love the music. That's really nice of you to say. Because I know we're always goofing off, I'm never able to tell you seriously, dude. You're that's a really, really nice amazing songwriter. Thank you very much. Karen. So what's the process? Because I've seen you sometimes just get in the studio and you just fucking do it in right, one take. Right. And then fill those words in. Is right. that how you always yeah. normally do it? I mean, sometimes. So, in, usually I just go in, either I made a beat or found a beat, and um, want to go in and I'll just do a scratch melody and vocals for 20 minutes, 30 minutes, yeah. and then say, oh, this is cool. And if you don't usually get it, in that time frame, it's not the one for you. Yeah. So then if you don't get it, you move on. But if you like it, then you come back and rearrange it and then Touch make, it up a, make a song out of it. You know, put lyrics over it. It's like a package. Right. It's just sometimes also when I'm really depressed, I'll just sit down with a guitar and <clears throat> a fifth and see what I come up with. You know what I a mean? A fifth? A fifth of Tito's. Oh, that's you. You like Tito's? Sometimes, sometimes it makes my tummy hurt. Yeah. That's true. Gives you the Encino poopies. I know it was you. I didn't, I didn't, <laughs> put, come, I didn't do the poop. Come on, man. I'm just joking. But, you know, it all, there's no right way to write a song. Not sure, yeah. You know? Um, earlier there was a lot of speculation that you were gonna make country music. What's up with that? Are you still doing that? Is your mind still on that? No, I mean, or do my you mind, feel like the world's not ready for it yet? My mind, I mean, maybe goes off to wherever it, it goes. I mean, you know, I like I've made songs. Like I make every kind of like I've made rock songs. I've made country songs on the side and shit. Yeah. And it's just for fun. It's just like to you know fucking. There's rock no one out. way you want to go. No, I mean, I just want like the, I think this third album is different, and I think that there's no telling where we could go. Like you know, even on the last record. We had stay on, on everything. And I think that was a, just a nice, I mean, why not? Yeah. I mean, not sure. you know, just make, make songs that you fucking like. Yeah, that's all, that's what it's about. Yeah. And just no telling how you're gonna feel whenever you fucking sit down in the studio. You're like, what are we gonna do today? Oh, we have a plan. Well, you just fuck around until, you know, maybe I'll play a riff on the guitar. Maybe I'll sit down and make a beat on the yeah. FL and then, you know, see where it takes you. What's your What's your least favorite thing ever what, about about being who you are today? I'd say I'd say not being able to be home. Because mm. I love I'm such a homebody. Like um, I just want to hang out around, and do absolutely nothing. Matching. But and you know they they make you, you know, like record songs and like yeah play shows and stuff. What is that? I just want to sit you and like performing live. Though. I love performing live. That's like your favorite thing. I love performing live. I love being in the studio. You take that stage. Thank you, sir. I try my best. Um, but, you know, it, 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 at a certain point, it is. it gets harder yeah. whenever you're doing... How many stops is this next to her? It's a fucking... It's a shitload. Do you feel like sometimes you're not a real person? Well, he, like, tell me about the tour life, because I, I don't know what that times. experience is. There's been many times, not, not, from, not from a fan perspective, because I love my fans to death, and they're super respectful, and yeah. always show love, and I try to do the same 
back. But, of course. You know, I know there's sometimes that um, I love all my team and everything, but I know sometimes these guys are like, oh, you know, let's book this show for him and not yeah. even tell him. And, right, right, right. I'm really, really excited to play new music. Yeah. Um, on the new tour. I think it's going to be such a fucking blast. Entree. But Tell me about Posty Fest. Posty Fest is going to be really bitching. How'd it come about, though? Mm. Did you want to, a festival? Like, how did it happen? Yeah, I wanted a festival. Sorry. Don't do it again. Could you hear that on camera? How'd it come about? Maybe I should just put my fucking... How'd the festival come about? God damn it, Curry. Shit! Um... <laughs> I don't know, I want to do a fucking festival because I have, I have a lot of cool friends who are really talented uh -huh. and I want to do a festival in Dallas right? and, you know, just make something cool and, and a really cool vibe that represents me and, and, you know, different shit. Now we're doing it at AT&T this year, which is fucking awesome. I'm playing. You are? You should play. You no, should come. I, I'm going to play. Well, I need a mixtape first. No, I'm, I'm confirmed. They already, your team didn't tell you. I'm playing. Really? Yeah, dude. What slot? Fucking right before you. Really? I don't care. I'll do it. Let's what go. Say. What are you going to do? I'm just going to. Interpretive dance. No, I'm just going to have a, do a live interview with Billy Eilish. Really? Yeah, yeah. We're going to talk about her crazy outfits. Her outfits are crazy. I love them. Yeah. They're cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool. You're I'm, one to talk about crazy outfits. Me? I'm not, what do you mean? I just... Oh. I, have you seen... Have you interacted with any Utahans yet? I did, yeah. This, uh... So I took an Uber to the, uh... To the hotel we were staying at. Mm -hmm. And, uh... I had this driver. And he was like, where are you going? And I was like, if I tell you, I'd have to kill you. And then he asked me again. And I was like, we're, we're shooting an interview. It's just whatever. Uh -huh. and, and then he's like, all right, well, let me give you a tour of Utah. And he took me to all the monuments. And he just wouldn't let us go. He like took us 25 minutes off the rail. And then he dropped us off and waited outside the hotel. He said, well, you know, when you guys are ready to go, let me know. And then we just told him. He like, must have thought you were something special. Yeah. And then I went and to you are. Thank you. You're welcome. You're really special right here. You're my big special guy. Thank you. Thank you for being in my life. It's really sweet of you to say. Dab. Dab with me. People are nicer. They're okay. <laughs> I want to take you like Provo or something. What's that? No, it's like a lot of Mormons there. Oh, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, he was a Mormon. Was he? Yeah, he kept showing me the churches. Because people look at me pretty funny. Yeah. I'd love to see. Not that you look funnier than but me. I, I got a, a tattoo on my face. You yeah, know? yeah. They don't what see it. What is it? This is like a. You know what it is. Bookmark fucker. or something? You said it earlier. <laughs> you know what it is. Don't make me kill you. Tell me about the Bud Light collaboration. Um, so I've always been passionate yeah? about Bud Light. I know Ever that. since I was the legal drinking age of 21. I think even before which that. Is, no, which is when I started drinking at the age of 21, the legal age. It wasn't before the legal age? Because no. I feel like I nope. saw a photo of you holding nope. the Bud Light. Nope, nope. It was directly on the legal age. Of now. 21? Of 21. The, That's cool. I like yeah. that you waited till you were 21 to drink a I, cold can of Bud Light I beer. I very much did wait. That's until cool. Until I was the legal age of 21. That makes sense. And that's the most responsible choice to make, is to wait till you're 21 years of age. Because that's what the law says. That's true. Could you uh, spark me up here, buddy? I would buddy? love to. And so you waited until you were 21. To the legal age of 21. Of course. And um, I said, you know what? I want to collab with you guys. I don't know what we're going to do, but I want to be a part. I have an Anheuser-Busch tattoo. Wow. Um, uh, and I said, like, let's let's make it work. Like, Were they for it in the beginning? Or? I don't I don't know. I don't think so. How many plaques did you have to get before Bud Light was like, oh, I don't think it was a plaque. It makes thing. sense. I don't think it was a plaque thing. I think it was a timing thing. Mm. But you that know, I sense. said, like, look, 
it's not like another brand deal, right? It's like I'm actually passionate Something about. Genuinely love. I'm, yeah, I'm passionate about oh, the project. Oh, that's disgusting. Fuck. Don't smoke <sighs> it anymore. But it's so good. It makes me feel like a boss. You, <laughs> I'll do anything to look like a boss. <sighs> that's what Utah's about. It is about being a boss. So you, so, so it made sense. All right, I, it wasn't about the plaques, of course. Mm -hmm. When it comes to Bud Light, there's a genuine connection there. Do you like it? Are you I, enjoying I, slamming some sudsy ones? You know what? Before this day, I had never had a Bud Light. I don't I, believe that. I'd have to say it, it, it's it's pretty damn good. It's a it's a good beer. It's I don't cruiser. even. I normally don't even drink. It's a cruiser. It's good. It's good. But before I was rudely interrupted by my interviewer. I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I touch those knees one more time? Yeah. Thank you. It's just like uh, two Bud Light shows later, and now we're doing cans with my ugly face on it. And mm -hmm. it was a genuine growth. It, yeah, with them. it was, it was cool. like, yeah, it was like yeah a I like it, and I like all the people there. Yeah. And who's you know, your favorite person from the Bud Light team? I can't tell. That's not fair. Not sure. Will you tell me off camera? Yeah, I will. Okay, that's you. That's really cool, though. And you also collabed with Crocs. Those yes. sold out immediately. Yeah. I can hook you up, too. What size you got shoe a pair? do you wear? I wear 10 to 13. Interesting. These are 20. Those are size 20? No, they're not. I took <clears> 15. 15? I don't believe that. You want to try them on? Yes. You don't want to try them on. No, I don't. You're right. So, <laughs> you have them for all? You really I have, have them. Here? I'll give you a pair. I have, like, right. a, I have like, it's like, um. I know, know what it is. I wanted a pair. Well, I'll get you one. I would love to give you a pair. Would you wear them? Yeah, I would. Would you wear them to a wedding? I've never, I've never been invited to a wedding. But if you were invited to a wedding, would you wear them there? If it made sense, yeah. What do you mean if it makes sense? Well, unless you say yes, I'm not going to give them to you. In... Oh, a wedding? Yeah. <laughs> I would uh, wear them too. I didn't. No, I got a pair for you yeah. in my back. Yeah, it, has a, cool. it has the sack. It has like the, the little drawstring bag and yeah. everything, so you can resell them if you want to. I'm not gonna resell them till next week, of course. <laughs> when I just asked you wait a week as well. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, that's yeah. smart too. Come on, dude. How much do you think those will get on on Goat after the album comes out? I'm gonna edit. Based on your streetwear knowledge. <sighs> I'm just gonna blur you saying goat, you know? So oh, yeah. I don't even want to give them a shout out. Why? They fucked you on a pair of Yeezys? They fucked me. They fucked me hard, Post. They fucked me hard. They, you know, I did a video for goat and I was using my T Star voice. Really? Yeah, and they said, can you not use that voice? And I was like, what you mean? This is how I talk when I'm this, this is how I was born and raised. I love T Star. Who are you to say this ain't my real voice? Right. My body, my choice. Yo, give them a quick. Give him a quick two, just a two. Mm -hmm. T Star. Oh. <laughs> mm. T Star, my favorite shoe is the Stan Smith. I want to do a song with Sam Smith. Damn! That's a fact. I want T-Star Pussy Fest. I'll pay you $800 and a free Pizza Hut. Pizza. And the Crocs. Coupon. And the Crocs. I'll take it. But that's just a bonus. That's if you go platinum. I think I did do a T-Star intro for like the mixtape. And you guys didn't use it. Wait, really? Yeah, dude. I recorded it. Who was I that? remember. Where yeah. were we? We were fucking naked in a studio, dude. Was it in New York? No, I was in LA. Oh, my God. Mm -hmm. I remember, too. I had no tattoos. For the mixtape. Yeah, it was the mixtape. Wow. T-Star, Post Malone, like Al Capone. T-Star, do, do that. Like Al Capone. We could totally do it again. Why? I would love to. The album didn't come out yet. No, the album didn't come out yet. And it's not turned in. It is turned in. <laughs> and I was like, hey, guys, 
I need this intro <laughs> so bad. This we'll have to start reprinting CDs. Yeah, you just replace uh, me with Travis on the on the Aussie song. Tell me about the song you did with SZA. Okay. Because when I, when I heard it, it kind of reminded me of Sunflower. Sure. Which uh, Sunflower was a song I really liked when it came out, which was interesting because when it, when it came out, nobody was really listening to it. I had like this low moment and then it just fucking... Sure. Do you remember that? I remember that. I think it's cool. What I was your reaction when the song wasn't hitting immediately? Well, that, no, I think my songs do that. I don't uh, know why, mm. but it's like there's never really a hit right, immediately, right. but then two weeks later, you know, people will start right. listening or something. All you right. know what it's I mean? Right. Which I think, I don't know. Maybe it's just like, maybe you got to hear it more than once. Yeah. I don't know. But you said you used to like it. I still do. Oh, okay. I, I sing every word. Acapella right now, you would? Yeah. Needless to say, I didn't want to do it. I never did it. Call me quit, yeah, baby, I'm a rat. I'm a rat, I'm a rat, I'm a rat. Come on, my face, I'm a rat. Coming on my face. T Star Remix. And then left in the dust. And it's in power. Every night I need to know. Mm. And it'll make it easy on me. Mm. Every night I need to know. And it'll make it easy on so me. I'm gonna do a job for now. 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 And it's getting annoying. You really gotta go. I know you wanna wanna know. I know you wanna wanna know. And it left in the dust. And you're the sunflower, and you're the sunflower, and then you love me too much, and then you left in the dust, and then I suck by you, and you're the sunflower. Yeah. I fucking love that song. Dude. I fucking love you. Thank you. I love you too. What were we talking about? Scissor song. Oh, yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I could sing them all, dude. It's the best. <laughs> um, it was cool because we had, I had, we, we kind of made that song kind of last minute. And I was like, you know who would sound really fucking awesome on this? Who? SZA. Yeah. And then we hit her up and she was like, I would love to do it. And she is so incredible and just such a sweet person, such a good person so fucking talented and I'm really blessed to be able to have her on there. Facts. Facts. Which is exciting. Cause I think the song really came together really nicely. Dude, that's a fucking banger. Thank you, sir. But I, I don't know, Lou made the beat and I wasn't crazy about it off rip. Yeah, yeah. And then I was just like, okay, yeah, this could work. Tell me about the song with Halsey. Um, that song is interesting because the song, mm -hmm. Lou played it to me a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And I was just like touring and shit. Yeah. So I was like not really in album mode necessarily. And then like he played it back also towards the end of making the record. Yeah. And then I was like, this is fucking massive. Right. So um, Halsey did a verse and then it all just came together like uh, magic. What was your favorite Halsey song beforehand? Anything Lou does. Not you. I do like the one with her and Jeezy. Yeah. I do like that song. Which one is that? Uh, you and I, right? You and I? It's either you and I, it is you and I. Oh, true. She's got a voice though. Yeah, my favorite Halsey song is Mr. Um, I said I got you if you fall, and if they're loving, fuck them all. That's a good song, and you I got a good voice it. too. Thank you, bro. I people don't really talk about it much. They like focusing on like, cause you know the DJing or, or my fashion and, or and your interviewing skills and the interviewing skills, cause you know I'm the greatest. But it's so like, you you know what it is. It's just like overwhelming to like even cater to that when I'm just like 
gems, 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 dropping gems all the time. I need to spend time with my family. Shit. Congrats on the beep beep. Thank you. Thank you, man. Aaron showed me a picture. Yeah. She's perfect. She really is. She really is. You I excited? love her so much. Yeah, dude. It's, you know, you know, bullshit. I, I feel like, you know, fatherhood, fatherhood really is the meaning of life. Father of the year. Just fatherhood. And motherhood. In and motherhood. Yeah, just, just and any anyone ever anything you identify with yeah but having a child and reproducing life is, is pretty it's a beautiful beautiful journey and I don't know sometimes I battle with work and wanting to just fucking be home you know, so I know exactly how you feel I, it's re, it's relatable to to some extent well, my baby is my my Xbox oh there you go and if you turn there it off one more time I'll fucking clobber you. That, that's how that's how it goes, you know. But it's like, it's crazy because you know these are different scales, but I feel like we we can relate on them a little bit. Yeah, it's just like, yeah. Sometimes being home is just so much fun. It is fun. So it's like, oh, you wake up. What do I have to do today? Oh, nothing. You want to have kids though one day, right? I would love to have kids. What's the name? What's it? What would you name your child? Blade. Blade. That's a cool name. Zandrew Blade Post. Z Wait, what? Zandrew or Zarkon? Zarkon like Blade Post. better. That's a hard name, huh? I don't like Zandrew too much. But I, I like Zarkon a lot. It's Andrew with an X in front of it. That's cool. I think a name that starts with an X automatically it, later on in life sets you up for coolness. Way coolness. And Blade. if your middle name is Blade, or if it's just a hyphen, Zandrew Blade um, Bellagio Post. I don't know. I love you. You like it? I love or Zarkon. That was I love. You are so cool. I love it. That's my song for you. I just wrote it. Yeah. That's the one Kanye reference, right? Which one? You're so cool. I love it. When mm -hmm. you made that song with Lil Pump? I don't know what you're talking about. I just wrote that for you. Oh, true. What's your favorite movie, dude? John Wick and Lord of the Rings. You know, I, I talked to Chief Keef yesterday and he said that was his favorite movie, what? John Wick. John Wick's awesome. You and Chief Keef. Yeah. You know what's another crazy thing? Me, you, and Chief Keef all born in the same year, months apart. Really? Yeah, you're July 4th, right? Yeah. July 26th. Yeah. And then Chief Keef is August 15th. All he's 1995. A, he's such a fucking awesome 1995, there you go. He's so awesome. And you guys are into John Wick. I was saying that, like you were talking, um, if you're out there, which I know you are, we should do some gaming content because I know you're a big gamer boy like me. And now I figured out we just had something else in common. Same yeah. year, yeah. same birthday, it's or crazy. not same birthday, same it's pretty much favorite up the movie. Alley. Yeah, yeah, he, he definitely would be down. You can come too. Uh, yeah, no, for sure. But you you you've never seen John Wick. I've never, yeah. So you I, acted as if you'd never seen it. I've never, I've really never saw John Wick. It's really dope. Anyone else like John Wick? Everyone has seen John Wick except for you. You ever watch Working Moms? No, but I don't know why it's on my Netflix. Over you should there. watch Working Moms. It's Is a, it good? It's an amazing show. There's not that many shows on motherhood. And um, Working Moms does a good uh, representation. There's a ton of shows about motherhood. Yeah, like which? Isn't like Shameless, a, she's not a mother, but shameless? like, but the younger sister takes care of all the kids. Yeah, what else? Um, I'm pretty sure there's a show called Motherhood, about motherhood. You're going to watch a show called Motherhood? Yeah. You're going to watch a show called Working Moms. That is a cooler name. Come on, it's, it's Working Moms. Is it a comedy? It's, it's like a, it's a bunch of things. It's like a comedy, it's like a... Drama? It's a little dramatic, you know, they, they kind of get a little scandalous, but it's not thrilling. It's a, just more, it's like, it just walks you through motherhood. Desperate Housewives, one of my faves. Yeah. About motherhood. Yeah, but they're desperate. These are working moms. These women are thriving. Are they thriving? They, they think well, they are. Well, don't ruin it. But then they, they run through a lot of obstacles, and that's what you find out. You just spoiled it all. You find out what the obstacles are when you watch it, goddammit. But now I know there's obstacles. I mean, isn't there obstacles in, in, in anything? Not in Napoleon Dynamite. 
That's not a dream. He had to win the, the contest. That's not an obstacle. That was an obstacle for him. He had to get on that stage and do that dance, get all confident. He, he, no, he, he was trying to win that girl's life. That. He wanted to do that. It, that was an obstacle for him, though. He wanted to do that. That was He didn't have to do that. Yeah. But it wasn't an obstacle for him, and it was an obstacle for Pedro. He wanted to do that. What I'm trying to say was making this album an obstacle for you. It was an obstacle yeah. because, you know, it not necessarily making the songs, but there was a crunch time yeah. fitting, you know, album time between tour and shit. So, yeah. like, I remember we did 10 plus songs finishing in like th three days. True. Damn. So I was like, man, this is. And you finish all 10 songs in three days? More than 10. So, most, so the album was done in three days? Just about, recording wise. Tell me about Jimmy Fallon off camera. Awesome. That's cool. Badass. I remember the first night we did it, we went to an Irish bar and just sang songs and drank, and it was really fun. Such a good guy, and yeah. I'm so blessed to, to know him. And it was really, really a cool time because you know, you never. Because you never know, like, uh, you know, TV personalities and stuff, or yeah. just anyone in general, really. You never know if they're going to be actual real people. Yeah. But um, he's a real guy, and he's a really, really nice, sweet guy. What was your favorite thing about him, like Jimmy Fallon? I don't know, just just the genuineness. Just genuineness. Yeah, really, 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 really nice. What's your favorite thing about me? Your knees, your soft knees. Come on, bro, let's be honest. <sighs> your wife's here, I don't really care to talk about it on camera. It's your heart. Thank you. And your pencil's had too. I hate when you talk about the pencil. Why? It's... I thought you could see past it. I can see past it, it's flesh. Imagine. But I really love you because you've always been such a sweet guy and such a, like, just a caring individual and you are hilarious. Thank you. And you're not afraid to be yourself. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So you would say I, I kind of inspired you? I would definitely say you inspired all three of my records. Damn. That's crazy. And you inspire me to strive and just be the best that I can be. Not sure. Damn, that's cool. You know, because I could almost say the same about you. And um, I, seeing you kind of create your own lane for where you wanted to take things was really inspiring. And um, really not going with where anyone wanted to lead you. Right. And I know you probably think you're difficult with your team, but they really love you. I love them I too. think they love you, all right? But I do love you as well. Well, I love you too, and we were born in the same year, so. That's fucking true, dude. That's actually true. That's but cool. That's what I what I will true. say is, you know, you know, you know, being with your team, it's like a very family setting, and it's been a lot of the same people that have been there since mm -hmm. day one. And I don't, I don't really think you put them through a lot. Just, sometimes you get tired, man. It's yeah. a hard life, but you're you're an extremely genuine person, and I, I, I it, it's definitely extremely noble, like knowing you through all these phases of your career. Sure. And it not changing anything about sure. how you look at life and, and, and just your outlook. And yeah, I mean, he's being Canal Street, you know? Yeah. I told you, you, he need, you need to bring me some chains, oh. some Canal Street chains. Next time you see me, I'll, I'll bring them, you know? I he used to walk around with fucking 20 Canal Street bust down chains. Yeah, had Bart Simpson. Bart Simpson. He had like all of Gucci Mane chains replica. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I had the MMG chain. Yeah. I had them all, dude. Jewelry is so goofy, isn't it? No. You don't really wear jewelry like I think, that. Yeah, I do. I don't, I, I mean, I used to. I still have my jewelry. Yeah. I'm just like too lazy to put it on. And then at the end of the night, whenever I come up, come home, I'm really drunk. No. And it takes me like 15 minutes to take so, my necklaces off. No, that's shit. But I do like a good watch. A, a good watch is good. I feel like it's more everything that comes with it. That's annoying. Sometimes jewelry is just fun. It is fun. When people just take things too seriously, they just they just become annoying. They're not good. Not really. Like how? Can just I have like, a beer, Bobby? 
it just becomes a flashy thing that you need to like, I don't know, it's just like part of a look. I feel like me and you kind of see the humor of like wearing certain jewelry and that's even I love jewelry things. though, like, Imagine. I like it. I mean, I think it's awesome. It's just an inconvenience. Yeah. Because I see like, some people are so good at fucking jewelry, like Rick Ross, his jewelry is like awesome. Or like uh, and Travis's jewelry is awesome, and so are all the Migos fucking snap. I was gonna say the Migos. They go yeah. in. Like yeah, I love the ch the chokers are cool, man. Yeah, yeah. I think that's sure. cool. Um, but I just got a big ass Cowboys chain. That was Cowboys chain. That's all you really need. And I wear it to games and stuff. You know, being in this game, being in this industry and whatnot, it's it's kind of hard to find people to align yourself with. Do you have like any mentors that you call up and like check in on and like, you know, they kind of give you some kind of guidance and yeah. you return the favor? I don't know. I've always been super like, you know, talking to people is like sometimes hard for me. Yeah. Cause I'm like, I feel like I have a lot of shit to say, but I'm shy to say it and right. like really express my feelings to people. Yeah. And I don't know, I usually keep to myself. Thanks, puppy. I usually keep to myself. Mm -hmm. And Kerwin? Oh, you have, he's got a brewski right here. Oh, thank you. Oh my God. He was just gonna chuck it at your face. Oh, shit. I'll just, let's just do it for fun. That's dope. Ooh, look, what a throw, Bobby. Wow. Oh, nice. Oops. Oh. See ya. Fuck it. There you go. You gotta need a new house. God damn it, Kerwin, you done it again! But you feel you feel shy opening up to fellow artists and whatnot? I uh, I mean, depends on how much of these I've had. Yeah, yeah. You know. Um Sway I find I can talk about anything. Yeah, he, he's really cool. And um I don't know, it's just It's different. I like to talk to myself. Right. I like to talk to myself because, you know, people are empathetic and shit, but like, they might not understand or look at it from your perspective, which is a good thing because then they can give it to you from their perspective. Right, but right. Whenever you're having a fucking shitty time, you kind of, I think, you know, the help comes from inside of you. Right. You know, I think that like if you feel better about the situation and you can do it yourself, then you became you just became stronger. You just leveled up and you figured out a, a new way to, to cope that. with something. It you know? one hundred percent takes a lot to do that. That shit's hard. Yeah. I've had some breakdowns with, you know, friends and shit before, like Yeah. As have I? Yeah. Just like crying and uh uh going insane, feel like you're going fucking crazy, but that's what it's about, man. It's about growing and, and figuring life out, you know, yeah. one day at a time, man. Damn. Damn. That shit got me in deep thought tape. Like, what are you thinking about? It's just like, you know, like a part of me feels like, like you love this, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's like, you know? It's kind of almost everything you ever wanted, but at the same time, it's like sometimes it's it's the same thing that that'll break you down to your knees, and it's, it's like, what the records about. I didn't ask for this shit, man. It's what the records about. Yeah, you know, it's about fake friends. Yeah, you know, it's about working working your ass off, and you feel like sometimes people don't appreciate like in your life they don't appreciate like shit. And Not that many people talk about that side right, of the game, right? At all. That's what it's, I don't know, that's what the record's about. And I think it's a really nice, tasteful CD. I love it. I love you. I love you too. That's sure. true. That's actually true, that's actually pretty fucking true. Mm -hmm. No, that's true, that's true. That is true. That's true. Yeah. No, that's pretty true, that's actually true. That's mm -hmm. fucking true. Mm -hmm. What's your favorite song you've made? You can't ask me these questions. Come on, you gotta have an answer. What's your favorite song that, that I made? you've made? It kind of depends. It's like, it's it, it, they really go off moods. I mean, I told you, I'm, sure. I'm, I'm a huge fan of the. Uh, I love Deja Vu. 
It's an interesting choice. That, that song is awesome. <clears throat> but then there's like just deeper songs that just put me in a trance. There's like, fuck. Yeah, it, it is pretty hard to answer that one, actually. I just, my answer is they all suck just the same. You don't like your songs? I love my songs. But they're, it's like, it's like they're my, they're my, uh, my songs. I made them. They're like, they're like my babies. Yeah, they're sometimes. like your little babies. You can't, you can't pick your favorite baby. No, you can't, no, no. And everybody says that. No. That's like the worst answer to that question. No, that's a fact. But, you know, in comparison, to whatever I make next, you know, it's time for them to grow and move on their own and, you know, flap those wings. Do, do whatever, they flap their wings and mm -hmm. let them out of the nest so they can fucking soar, you know, whichever way they want to go. That's a fact. They all have their own personalities and they all tell a different story. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's on to the next, but sometimes whenever I'm drunk, I hate listening to my own music. You really do? Yeah, just like, you know, you said you hate, your own voice on camera and like I do, yeah, you know, I can't I, hear it. I can't stand it, but I can't hear it. But sometimes when I'm drunk, I go back and listen to records and say, you know what, this is a good song. I really yeah, like this song, you know? yeah. And I like watching covers a lot. Oh, you do? I love watching covers because Damn. people are so much like better than me, and I'm like, wow, I I love what you did. Right. That's really cool. Damn, you like the covers? Uh -huh. This dude, the kid Travis, he's a gangster. He has such a voice and he did like a whole mashup and shit and I'm like, this sounds awesome. He kind of like R&B'd it and I was like, this is really cool. Was it for Rockstar? He did a bunch of them. Oh, true. How many covers have you heard for Rockstar? I don't know, shitload. I've seen a lot of them. I like the R&B ones. I think yeah. it's so cool to hear the different, I'm like like an, act, like, a, like an actual voice that yeah. doesn't suck on there. I think it's uh, don't say that. What videos are, are you making for the album right now? Uh, we just did a circle. Or Circles video will be out soon. Okay. We're gonna do a San Tropez video. I don't know if you heard that. I have heard San Tropez. It's awesome. It's just you on that song. song. Yeah, it's a fun yeah song. that is a cool song. A really you were in your bag. Yeah, yeah. I had making to. that song. I had to. I had to. But we're shooting a video for that tomorrow okay. here, I think. And you know, I don't know. Just whatever. Shooting videos is, is, I have so much respect for like actors and stuff. Yeah, because you have to stop and because, start. Oh and my stop God, and that's start. the worst fucking shit. It's like, you're like, okay, you do a scene, <laughs> you do a scene and you sit around for like fucking two hours and yeah. you're, you're like, should I take a nap? Yeah, you can. Or if I wake up, am I going to be too tired to do anything? Yeah. And then Why don't you just do what you just did again? Exactly. Uh, and then I think, you know what I think? I think movies need to put more budget in lighting. Mm. And shit because it takes them like with the small team of guys it takes forever So yeah. I think they just need like a hundred lighting guys Damn. because then maybe there wouldn't be so much wait time Have you thought about getting into acting? I'd love to. I did a movie with Mark Wahlberg. I shanked him oh, in the wow. movie I don't know that. We're in jail and I shanked him. What movie is that? It's called Wonderland oh. I don't know if it's out yet. It's not out yet. I know that. Oh, well, you just ruined it. No, you'll see what's going on. Oh, there's a reason you shanked him. You'll see. Oh, sure. There's obstacles. I gotta tell you the truth, folks. Thanks, Papa. This isn't really an interview. What is it? We all care about you. And? I care about you, too. Well. So, tell me what's good. What's going on? Uh, what's on your mind? You know, the Bud Light deal, it's been going great. You know, we love the Bud Light. But it, I feel like you've done a, a little too much advertising for, for the Bud Lights. A little uh, kind of advertising them uh, <coughs> every 30 minutes of the... 30 minutes. Bobby, you want to help me with this one? I'm not advertising. <laughs> this is something that I fucking like. Now! <laughs> Fuck you guys. You guys think you can come to my fucking house and talk to me about uh, my stuff? We, we just, we can't. I want to talk to you. We just, I we think 
We just care about your well-being. Being? Yeah, you care about your well-being. Shut up. You don't fucking know me and you'll never Cut know me. Cut the cameras. Cut the cameras. <laughs> just kidding. Um, so <laughs> I'm really not advertising though. I know, I know. I, know. I just like the stuff. I'm just messing with you. I'm just messing with you. Just a little joshing. <laughs> so, <laughs> Miggy so, Miggy sexy. Miggy so, Miggy sexy. So. Not advertisement. <laughs> oh my god. They're just, they're flying all around here. We gotta hear a beer bong later. I don't know what you're talking about. Can you tell me about you and Justin Bieber? Um, bowling? No. The bowling time. Tell me about the time you choked <laughs> Justin Bieber. It's not good interview technique. You're blocking your mouth. Tell me about the time <laughs> you and Justin Bieber were like choking each other at the club. That was fucking... That was crazy. <laughs> like... No, I just love everybody took it so seriously. To be honest. To be honest. You know, like, I saw it and immediately laughed. I understood the joke. You got the joke, right? It was so funny. Thank you. I used to fake choke my friends all the time. Because it's like crazy. It's like you can do something right. as normal right, as right, like, right. oh, let's yeah. do this. And then someone gets a shot of it. <laughs> and it's no, fucking, it fucking viral, dope. bitch. No, it is, it is dope. It is shit's fucking pretty It dope. is fucking dope whenever like you're with your boys just getting fucking it's Like, yo, let's just fuck with the popsos real quick. <laughs> What's good? Yo, where's the pops at, bitch? <laughs> What's good? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I can't believe you showed up with two red cams. Is that a red cam there? You showed up with a, you got a red cam for BTS. I thought it was gonna be Kerwin with a fucking tripod <laughs> and he was gonna walk in and he's like, hey, I'm here, let's do it. That is, that's, <laughs> it's a tripod, is it not? That is a tripod. But look at this boom mic. Yo, it's a different year. That's all I'm trying Metro to say. There's fucking Metro boom in here. Yo, it's a different year. You feel me? Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Stadium status type shit. Ha ha ha. T star. T star. T star at the stadium. Used to play the Palladiums. Damn. All right, Post Malone. <laughs> Thanks so much for being on my show. Oh, shit, dude. It's a one for the pod. Mm, oh, my God. Don't cry. Don't cry. It's okay. Don't cry. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right, buddy. It's all right. Who's my special guy? Who's my special guy? It's me, baby. <laughs> Can we forget about the things I said when I was drunk? I didn't mean to call you that. No? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. To, um... This was uh, talking with Kerwin and, um... What the hell? What? Hey. <laughs> And we love you, and we can't wait to see you again. Round two coming real soon. Kerwin's moving in with me, and he's bringing the beautiful beep beep. And I'm gonna be the best uncle ever. Make sure to like and subscribe and hit that bell icon. And um, see you soon, guys. <laughs> this is where it would fade out. Is it fading out? Dab all day, dab all night. People said that the dab has died, but it never left. It's here to stay. I dab all day. <laughs> It's a little bit of a new record. Thank you.